hi everyone so welcome back to the channel so today we are interviewing shreya raj a third year delhi technological university student con- currently pursuing a software engineering and has backed an intern with amazon was a part of the microsoft engage program the amaze wow program and has been a hard working person that i know from some time and today we're going to hear about her experience her preparation strategy and everything about you need to know about the programs that i just mentioned so hi shreya how are you hi siman i'm fine how are you so is there anything that i missed out on during the introduction that you want to add uh no i think you covered it all so thank you for that introduction ha uh, thank you uh so we're going to start with your experience with microsoft engage program if i'm speaking that right yeah uh actually previously it was known as the microsoft codes program so it okay. was for uh, second year uh, women mostly girls only like they allow girls only there is a separate a separate program for uh, guys that is i think code fundu but let's focus on codes so basically codes is for the second year uh, people who can do intern with microsoft after uh they two years in college so how did you come to know about this opportunity where did you stumble upon it or how did you come across it i i had heard about it from seniors in my first as well as second year like many seniors from our college had bagged interns uh microsoft interns to codes so i had idea about it but uh i think the tnp cell sent a notice uh regarding the same So is it only for some particular colleges or open for all? I think that is that this program is only for a selected colleges in India. All right. So once you got to know about the opportunity and once you applied to it, what was the process for application or selection? So uh, first of all, we we waited. At, so uh, there was no communication from the codes team in Jan or Feb. So we were worried about uh, as our seniors are told that they would ask you for your resume and stuff in uh, Jan starting only. But uh, this came just before our mid sem exam and in a very short notice. So uh, they came and they told us to fill a form and. Uh, they scheduled a test in two or three days uh, within two three days time so we so we, what was the timeline when did you apply and when did you get the reply i think i applied in uh, by the end of feb and uh, i think i took the test uh, on 2nd of march i guess march 2020 2nd of march 2020 so there was no short listing this the first test which which we took on the 2nd of march that was the first short listing process so it had multi choice multi correct questions the mcq questions and uh, yeah so we had so to so these so mcqs was, were based upon what these were all coding mcqs yeah they were mostly based on dsa uh, and some of them basic oops concepts uh there were subjective questions as well uh, there was a lot of uh, there the, there was a set of 30 questions or uh, 30 objective questions with no negative marking i believe and uh, two subjective questions as far as i remember okay So once you gave the test, and then what was the process ahead? So what did you learn in the program, and what all happened in the program? Could you detail that out for us? So this this was the first step. This was the very first step, and this is not the end. Or this was the uh, first uh, phase where we where people got shortlisted. And the next round was a coding round. Where we where we took a coding test, which had three questions, and we had to solve it in one and a half hours time. Uh, it had questions on graphs, uh, linked list, and I mean, there were two questions which were easy to medium, and there was one difficult question based on recursion. So this was the second round where many people didn't qualify for the next process, next round. There were around four to six people who who were shortlisted for the further process. Uh, then the further process included a virtual idea thon. Uh, I don't remember the name, but there was a there was an idea thon which was held virtually this time. Uh, normally, uh, where uh, 
in non covid time uh, microsoft used to uh, call the selected candidates from each colleges to their office and conduct the hackathon but this time since because of the pandemic it was not possible so okay. uh, they uh, they had to conduct it online so, so we had the did you get yeah. any mentoring from microsoft during this hackathon or was you like alone or with your no. team no i uh, no, i'll just tell you so we we were divided into groups where each group had people from different colleges like we can't uh, form a group of our own college people so i was paired not paired i i was put in a group of six people i guess and they were from colleges across india like some of them were from nit uh, one guy was from bits pilani and he had qualified in this program using the code fundu so i know ki uh, microsoft has a program for guys too but i think code fundu is only for uh, like selected colleges we we had been allotted a mentor and a technical support uh, from microsoft because it was a 3 to 6 hour long hackathon where we had to give them the code the main idea the documentation and everything so everyone had to uh, tell about their contributions and uh, and about the ideas mostly they were they wanted to check the communication skills and the creative aspect of each and every person yeah so after this idathon i got my more mail that yeah uh, you finally selected for the interview with microsoft so they asked us for uh, choosing a date uh, when we are available for the interview so and, uh, in the timeline you told us that you applied in february and then in march you got the mail so when was all this happening this hackathon and all this so what was the timing of the hackathon yeah i think they took one week for each step like okay. uh, after the first shortlisting the second coding test was uh, after a week and then and the idea thon was in the next week and then the interview mail came in the next week like so i i took the interview by by end of march or the start of april i don't remember exactly but this was the timeline what was asked in the interview what was the topic majorly asked in the interview i think the interview was pretty easy they they just asked me a linguist question and uh, some of my projects okay. that's it like it was a very short interview 15 to 20 minutes interview yeah could you discuss the question that they asked about from linguist so so they asked uh, first they asked ki uh, you have to uh, return the kth node from the end of a linked list this was the first question then uh, like we were discussing about the optimizations and then we switched to an expression which was uh, find the intersection point of merging point of two linked lists okay. and then about this uh, like how how do you detect cycle in a linked list all those questions were also asked so what i want to know that uh, during my interview when i was asked the same question about what we call floyd's cycle in a linked list right so they asked me to yeah. also know about the math behind it that how did we deduce this formula of yeah, of the yeah, fast yeah. so did they get there also yeah, about math behind it yeah yeah they they like they were focused on this the only topic the linguist so they asked me questions thoroughly like uh, how how can you prove that uh, the meeting point and the intersection point they they may or may not be the same or all the questions were asked so i think here it would be quite interesting to know that uh, for the viewers as well that generally when we sit on for coding rounds the graph dp and heaps or maps are the most general quite common topics that are asked whereas when we talk about face to face interviews some classical topics like trees linked lists stacks and queues come up quite often right i think that is something we could yeah, conclude from that so because uh, i think they kept it simple because it was only for like the second year people so they i don't think the seniors used to tell us they they won't ask you difficult questions only the basic uh, dsa would be asked so no need to worry about that all right so moving on was it the last step with microsoft or did were there any further steps so uh, i don't know what they did I, i never got a mail from them after the interview but they do had uh, had a uh, another program so what they did was they selected a few of the people from the first round of shortlisting and added them to this new program called engage the mentorship program so right now this was all codes and not engage 
yeah this was all gonus now all right. now now the mentorship comes in and that is what is engage so in engage it was a month long program and we were uh, assigned mentors we had to do a javascript project within the given timeline and not only javascript because we had to submit a web dev project that's why it said javascript but what but it was basically an ai project like we we build a tic tac toe game with okay. new features we had to add features and uh, we used the minimax algorithm for the same which comes under uh, artificial okay so basically what i'm more curious to know about so did you have choice that you can either submit a website and ai or anything or was it like fixed guidelines that you have to go towards ai using a website or something like that so was there any flexibility there were, there were fixed guidelines like they uh, gave us the demo or they gave us a sample project you can say like you you have to kind of do like do build something on the same project. lines right yeah do a similar project but then put your creativity like uh, make something different and uh, build build it in your own way through your own logic so yeah try to improve the already available code for that yeah. okay so this was the final process of all so this is uh, this is what they do in engage and after engage yeah. they go on ahead with the inter- internship interviews right yeah so uh, after the engage process uh, when they come on campus then they there is a separate process uh, for the girls who are who, who were shortlisted for engage all right so i i heard that you were also shortlisted for the intern program but you already had an offer so you didn't take the interview right yeah i was not allowed to yeah so i guess that that must be quite amazing you know like getting offers from microsoft as well as amazon Uh-huh. No, I, I didn't get an offer from Microsoft. I, like. I actually wanted to, but then uh, it was not quite possible because of the college rules and everything. Well, 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 they say hard luck. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so let's just talk about Amazon now. So while all of this process was going, there was also another program that you were part of, Amaze Wow. If I'm not wrong, right? So could yeah. you detail a little bit about the Amaze Wow program? So the Amaze Wow program came in mid of April, and we got to know. to our friends and uh, some linkedin posts like this was not an uh, this was not in, informed about through from college okay uh, yeah so the the instructions were clear that the amazing program is for hiring second year uh, for uh, yeah second year people would be going to third year so from what i can get it uh, is that it is an only women program and it is open for all like there's no college restrictions right uh, like there was an engage that only students from a few selected colleges uh, could apply there, uh, there was no restriction as such for the uh, amazon program ex- except that it was also a gender uh, high gender high program gender. okay so while all of this was going on i must think that you must be preparing for your interviews right like you said that you gave interviews for microsoft and gave interviews for amazon so what was your preparation strategy what questions were you solving because this is a common doubt that we get as well that uh, what is the difference between preparing for interviews versus competitive programming so which path did you take to prepare for amazon and microsoft my preparation strategy so i started preparing for uh, the interviews and uh, the placements uh, in my second year from the start of my second year uh, i had interest in competitive programming as i already know the knew the fundamentals of programming uh, since my school so uh, i didn't had to struggle a lot but then uh, competitive programming is not only about your interest it takes a lot of uh, dedication and you need to absorb i i didn't have time for that so uh, i stuck to the basics like i followed gfc uh, and did questions on deep code as well as interview bit for my preparation okay so that seems like quite common that people do questions on gfc lead code and interview bit and so basically what i want to point out here is that people think that only competitive way is the only way to crack the major companies while that is not entirely true you can stick to a particular list and actually practice fundamentals of every concept because if you can multiply it 2 by 2 then you can obviously extend it to multiplying 3 by 3 right and people think that only through competitive coding can they crack major companies while that is not entirely true that i feel 
I also feel the same way that solving questions on Geeks for Geeks lead code interview bit helps quite a lot. So next question that people have asked quite a lot is that when uh, what were the questions that you faced during your Amazon interview? What were the questions? What were the hot topics we could say that you faced during the Amazon interview? So uh, I think Amazon loves the dynamic programming because both of the questions which were asked in my coding round coding test, uh, they had uh, they were based on dynamic programming. Uh, Two grid DP and one was simple one D R A D P question. So, could you and, discuss uh, the exact question that you were asked? Do you remember that? I don't remember the exact question, but it was uh, something related to longest longest palindromic substring or subsequence. It was it was something like that. Oh, Not by the way, that that exact question is on my channel, so you can check that out. The link in the link in the description I'll put. Okay, <laughs> okay <laughs> so sure. subtle self promotion there. Okay, anyway, okay. so moving on, the final question that I would like to ask you is that how important do you think were the concepts of OOP or DBMS were used in your face to face interview? The final PI that I we call are very important. I think they are very important because uh, in for Amazon interview, I was never asked questions on my projects. They didn't ask me what development I know. They asked me uh, normal basic questions on polymorphism, inheritance. Yeah, uh, and they also asked me if I knew or uh, DBMS. So they uh, asked me to write some queries. For DBMS. So basically, I could say that fun fact. Uh, during my interview, also I was asked that suppose you are talking to a ten-year-old child and explain him the concept of OOP. So that was quite refreshing as a question. So if I think this is a question that everybody should prepare themselves for because it's a good question to ask in an interview, and your own concepts will get quite clear from this. Besides that, I think the only if you are only basing your knowledge. on what is written or what is taught in your respective universities or colleges that is not going to be enough because sometimes questions are asked beyond that as well because like i was asked the difference between sql and no sql while my college curriculum only focuses on the sql based dbms right so we'll just i think that is that covers everything that we needed to know about your experience and do you want to add any closing comments or anything that you would like to share i just want to say that uh, we can't miss on the computer fundamental subjects uh, for uh, dsa like we we can't uh, just compromise them uh, dsa is important the, there are mainly coding questions but the basic computer knowledge is also what they are checking so you must aware yourself of some of the common terms in each of these subjects that would really help you guys All right. So thank you for that great interview and all the experience that you shared. I hope that it helps a lot of people out there, and I hope that some people watching this video right now would be future your co-employees, I guess, in Amazon. So thank you for watching, everyone, and thank you, Shreya, for the great interview again. So we'll just wrap it up here. And if you like today's interview with Shreya, so there's more coming on the channel soon. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and share her experience and let me know on your feedback and what other questions you would like to ask. Thank you.